my name is Alex Pankhurst. I'm a senior product manager at Wayfair in our supply chain systems department. I've been at Wayfair for around three years now, coming out of our campus recruiting pipeline. I've um, been focused on sort of our supply chain products this whole time. Today, I'm going to sort of walk through what some of the different areas are that we focus within product here and sort of how those apply to our interactions with our stakeholders and our engineering teams. Um, so I'm going to start us out on the outbound fulfillment side. So joining Wayfair was very focused on sort of once we have inventory in the network, how do we actually execute in getting the inventory to customers when they're purchasing something? Um, specifically, the actual inventory component itself. So when we fulfill orders, we fulfill both through our own Cascade fulfillment centers, as well as third-party dropship suppliers. And a lot of what we need to do is sort of reconcile inventory into a single place, whether it be through EDI, API, or in, like an internal sync process to understand how much inventory do we actually have in the network, what's currently on hand and available for purchase, and then surfacing that back to the website for customers to check out. Um, it's super important that we make sure that this is accurate so that we're not allowing customers to purchase things that don't actually exist in our network. Coming out of inventory, once this was sort of in a, a better place, was focused more on the actual shipping component here. So again, within our own network, it's sort of easier to do this because we know which trucks are going to be arriving and um, leaving each day within our carrier networks. We're able to sort of give an assignment of, hey, you know, this order should ship tomorrow at 3 o'clock and we're able to execute on that from our own fulfillment centers. A little trick here on the dropship side where we aren't actually controlling the inventory flow within the warehouses and we more need to build algorithms that sort of predict um, based on both uh, historic and future information how long it's going to take for an item to ship and then surface that expectation back to a customer. Using both of these informations, we're then able to actually give a delivery plan or delivery estimate to a customer. We can say, hey, you know, we have a good understanding now of when this is going to ship. We're able to actually route this through different carriers in our network to make sure that you're going to arrive on a certain date. It can now give you a promise of a one or two day guarantee where you know when something's going to arrive. Um, there's a lot of different sort of algorithmic work going on here as well to see which supplier we're going to select to actually ship something, which carrier we're going to select to be most cost effective, and which truckloads we're going to route to within our network and where they should induct to to get to the customer as quickly as possible while still optimizing on that cost. Um, once this flow is sort of completed, the actual item gets delivered to the customer and we go back through sort of the same process here. Uh, more recently in my time at Wayfair, I've sort of shifted focus from the outbound fulfillment space into the inbound fulfillment space. So basically looking at how do we actually bring this inventory into our network so it's available for purchase from a customer. A lot of what we're looking at when trying to create that purchase plan is sort of related to the outbound fulfillment space where we're looking at something like regional demand or forecasts and trying to understand what we're going to need to ship into the future and based on that what we should be ordering and bring into our network to meet that demand. Um, so one of the main components of this process is first looking at those inputs of something like a forecast, the cost of fulfillment, and where we can actually source materials from, whether that be domestically or internationally, to bring them into our network. And based on this, um, we've recently been creating sort of a uh, replenishment plan model called BiFair, which takes these inputs and outputs a sort of purchase order, uh, order plan where we're saying, hey, you know, we expect demand to come in the future to these different locations within the US or Canada. Um, we think you should be ordering these items on these dates into these induction facilities. And we surface those plans back to both our inventory planning team and our suppliers so they can actually create purchase orders against these. Um, these two spaces really go hand in hand where we need to make sure we're bringing inventory into the right places within our network to eventually meet that outbound demand to customers while doing so as cost effectively and as quickly as possible. And it, it's, it's sort of a tied in process where I've sort of connected these together where we need to make sure both these spaces are talking to each other. Um, a lot of our engineering teams that we're interacting with are now figuring out how we can associate things like shadow costs of what we're bringing to the network to make sure that we're making better decisions on the outbound space. We may do things like hold inventory in a certain location for a future customer because it's more cost effective than actually selling that inventory currently. Uh, a lot of my day-to-day -day job currently is sort of understanding how our fulfillment network is growing within both of these spaces and gathering those requirements and working with our stakeholder leaders to sort of understand what changes we're going to need to be able to make here and working with our internal engineering teams to actually go and execute on creating these different model changes and interactions. Uh, thanks for sort of listening in today. Um, definitely check back the blog to hear more in the future of other videos.